Miss Melinda here, your spiritual worker from MissMelindasMetaphysicalServices.com, here to bring you a requested video on book recommendations to assist you with writing and crafting your own spells. So I am going to walk you through a few different categories of books that are helpful for writing your spells as well as inspiring you for your spell writing or inspiring you for spell techniques. And these categories of books are going to include ones that are my favorites. But before we get started with that, I do want to say that what I most recommend for writing your own spells is that you first learn the basic formula for spell writing and you learn the techniques that really work for you so that you can create things that come from your heart and that resonate with you the most because that's what's going to be most powerful for you. So that means finding the best way for you to raise energy, the best way for you to direct energy, and also finding the tools and the methods and the techniques that resonate the best with you as an individual. These spells that come from you and that are hand tailored to you are going to be the most powerful spells regardless of what anybody else does or what anybody else writes about. But books can be really helpful and other people's techniques can be really helpful for your inspiration as well as learning. The first things that I recommend that you have around are some encyclopedias, uh, especially encyclopedias about herbs. So Scott Cunningham's Encyclopedia of Magical Herbs is one of my favorites and a very popular one for herbs to use with your spells. You, your encyclopedia is the purpose of these reference books is to assist you with finding your correspondences, your ingredients that correspond to your goal or your intention for your overall spell, right? So Cunningham's Encyclopedia of Magical Herbs is a great one to have around for your botanicals, your herbs, your natural materia to use for your spells, as well as Hoodoo Herb and Root Magic by Cat Ironwood. And this one is really cool. Well, they both have a lot of folklore in them. So they both have a lot of um, techniques for using the uh, natural curios and the herbs and botanicals, as well as information about specific ingredients to plug in for specific intentions as well. So those are two wonderful encyclopedias to have around for your natural ingredients. And then I have another encyclopedia here called The Good Witch's Guide. It's a modern day Wikipedia of magic, magical ingredients and spells. It's by Sean Robbins and Charity Bedell. This was given as a gift to me and I really like it. I'm not Wiccan, but I love this book. And one of the reasons why is because not only does it have a bunch of different spells in it, but it's also an encyclopedia of different kinds of magic. So this is really useful, or an encyclopedia like this is really useful to get ideas for different ways that you can approach your magic or approach your spells, right? So that's a wonderful encyclopedia to have around. And then of course, Judica Illis. She's one of my favorite authors. This book is huge. This is the Element Encyclopedia of 5,000 Spells. So you can look up any need, any intention, any type of situation, and this is going to have a huge um, cross-cultural selection of different kinds of spells, different kinds of approaches that you can use for all different kinds of intentions. You can learn so much from a book like this. It references um, all kinds of different cultures and traditions, and it goes back in history. She's an excellent um, compiler and researcher of information. I highly recommend any of her encyclopedias. Another thing that I recommend is that you have some references a book, reference books around that refer to numerology. Um, numbers are really powerful, like the number of ingredients, for instance, is one way that you can use numerology in your spell work, but there are lots of other ways to use numerology in your spell work, and this can be a really powerful component to add energy, to add power to your work, especially if it highly resonates with you. This predictions library book is a really simple 
little book, um, but it's a whole series. They have one for tarot, they have one from palm reading, but I find them actually to be really practical and really informative, even though they're just these tiny little intro books. Something like this is really helpful for having a reference for numerology around. Then I have the Success Dream Book by Professor D. Herbert. And this is an old book from like the 30s, I believe. I pro probably shouldn't be using time to look up the year, but I think this is from the 30s and these old dream books used to be really popular in folk magic and people use their, the, their dreams to, um, to predict the numbers that they would use in a lottery, for example, but these books are encyclopedias of numerology that go so much deeper than that. I highly re recommend having something like this around. Um, these are really interesting and really useful, especially if you're really into numerology. Um, even from a historical perspective, they're really useful. And then my next category of books that I have are books of other people's spells that are inspirational to me. So that's the next category of books that I recommend that you have, are some books um, written by people that are inspirational to you or have spells in them that are inspirational to you so that you can get a good, well-rounded idea of how other people write their spells and you can get inspiration for your own. So Scott Cunningham's Earth Power is a really interesting book that shows you how to make magic without using much tools at all. You're only using um, the elements and you're only using um, natural tools. So things like the wind, things like leaves, things like water. This is all about just working with nature and performing magic or casting spells in conjunction with nature in that way. This char Charm Spells and Formulas by Ray Malboro. So I really like a lot of his work. He's got a really interesting approach to folk magic. And this book has been really useful for me in providing inspiration. Um, some of his candle, candle rituals get very intensive. And it's really interesting to see how you can make a candle service into something um, really complex and really rich and really multi-layered. I've got another book by Judica Illis, Magic When You Need It. This is all about practical spells for real life, everyday needs like real estate issues, lawyer issues, divorce, um, all kinds of things like that, legalities, employment, getting a raise, buying a house. So it's really nice also to have a well-rounded range of um, references for different types of spells, right? So whereas somebody like Marlboro may be a little bit more spiritual, this book by Judica Ills is much more practical. So looking at spell writing or the context of casting spells and making magic in uh, from a lot of different perspectives and a lot of different needs, really useful. The Magical Power of the Saints, another Marlboro book, um, this is very influential to me, has offered me a lot of inspiration for working with the saints. Um, he has a lot of variety in this book, including interpretations for um, your candle magic, interpretations of the flames, of the smoke, etc. And then the last one is Old Style Conjure by Star Cassis. I still don't know if it's Cassas or Cassis or if I'm saying that remotely correctly, but Old Style Conjure is a really um, inspirational book. Um, it talks about magic from a really down-to-earth perspective, shows you how things can be performed in your household, in your everyday life, using bare bones ingredients, um, really down-to-earth folk magic and a really nice historical perspective on folk magic as well. So I hope that you're inspired by some of these books. I thank you so much for watching and I wish you many, many blessings.